I can't get my I cannot get my hat to go all the way down on my head look I got a basketball on the front of my shirt how cool is that in honor of little Asia but I don't play sports I'm just tomboy but I can't get my my hat to fit all the way down on my head because up top is in fact more hair in which I got a braid so let me try to pull this down just enough make something fit until we get there but questions 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 this this video right here is gonna be about a, a night light like bedroom night light that's in fact what this video is going to be about a night light is it a possibility that Asia had a night light but before I get to that, let me let me mention something. Clarity, as in seeing, a clear view, right? You know what what stands out to me the most? Somebody is in fact going to be mad, as usual, but oh well. It's strange to me that from the beginning, to to come from a loving and nurturing environment, as in where Asia degree herself came from yes young asia where she came from a nurturing tight-knit family right or so it's been presumed or whatever that is right no i'm not making it worse as i go but to come from that type of environment wouldn't you wouldn't you be more seen around that environment pertaining to mass media i'm speaking in relation to the father himself why is he not there and nowhere to be found unless say it's uh, Shelby County, Shel Shelby Star News? But I'm saying from the beginning, that man's presence as well as his identity was nowhere to be found from the beginning. Yes, pertaining to mass media, why is that? That stood out to me the most. I'm like, why? Okay, if a mother, if you got two people involved that are raising children, and yes, only one parent is doing all the interviews, then it almost sort of looked like as if it's a single parent household and not two individuals, two adults running that household. That's, that's what it kind of, the, the whole Asia degree situation, that's what it kind of looked like and almost was formulated as or somewhat. Because to have, let me turn this on right quick because I'm hot. To, to have two individuals running a household once again i'm repeating myself because i'm trying to go back trying to make sense of even that to have two grown adults a mother and a father run a household is to know they both could have been involved in running the household right but yet why wasn't a father nowhere seen and be found as in conducting interviews i saw a picture yes of him him and the wifey i saw that as well as the son right but usually when you do big interviews and stuff like that both parents are involved and not just one because if it's only one parent doing everything then it almost looks like there's a single household being ran all the questions i ask it's almost as if i'm like a surveyor right here on the watch I'm saying on the on the timestamp itself yes people get mad when I ask sort of questions like this and yet none make sense so to not make sense is to in fact rewind the tape and in fact grab you a little bit of a hint of common sense yes that don't that don't add up to me why is that father nowhere to be seen anywhere doing and conducting interviews of any kind despite it being a two household nurturing tight-knit family that's a per, that's prevalent like a silent code almost and yet no whispers are there i will hope not in the dark so i'm saying it just that is so weird you cannot tell me that's not strange i'm thinking okay for every every single day a child goes missing right every single day a child goes missing and yet usually when it's a two parent household, usually two parents are there full blown doing the interviews of a two parent household. 
And yet if only one is doing the interviews, then that's to go and say that there must be only one person guiding and directing that household or something. Am I right or am I wrong? That in itself is off place, as in off base, as in it doesn't align, but it does, right? But yes, I did see them sitting there holding the photo in which they were holding of young Asia, despite the mother looking completely nonchalant as she was sitting there. And the father just didn't, he don't have no type of facial expression. The father, that's not to make fun. See, people think that you're, this is not a game. This is seriousness or else I wouldn't be standing here. The father himself, I don't know. Something about the father's face is kind of like, what's the word for it? It's not, uh, it's not nonchalant. The mother, when she sits there in photos, it's almost, besides all the tears, maybe they're real, maybe they're not, I don't know. But the father, the way he looks in his photos, there needs to be an examination and even that. As in while he goes to work, and doesn't conduct interviews. My thing is if you really care for a child as much as you say you care for a child, you would in fact be there conducting interviews and all over wherever. We got we got social media and we got black radio, everything all around us, surrounding us. Yes, here in even 2018. Because the, cra the case has been cracked open all the way. Asia Degree case. If you didn't know about it, now you know, right? It's been cracked all the way open since 2017. It's been opened up. That in itself is mystified. Yes, it is. So, in me saying that, the father is nowhere to be seen. Because, see, there's a lot of grieving and heaviness in the, in the realm of your child going missing. So, to not make enough noise is to not settle down, right? Or maybe it is. To not make enough noise is to possibly go set a, settle down. Where other people aren't. But remember, you are in fact the parents. Yes, Asia Degrees, mother and father, dear parents. No, I, I don't I don't hold fear in that because the question is to remain still while possibly going steady in the middle of the night. Who knows? But it's still the question. It's not a game and it's not laughter. No, even in that. See, parents that, see, when children go missing and the parents are too settled, as in laid back, that, in a sense, points to eviction as well as conviction. I don't think Asia was put out the house. I don't think. I would hope not, not at nine years old. I would hope not somebody fondling older than her, an older adult finding and playing with her in the dark, or possibly even brother. And then when that sort of thing is found out, she gets pushed out the front door. Who knows? People do all type of stuff. But that's not to blame the parents completely. I'm just saying, don't think that I'm saying guilty. I'm saying innocent to proven guilty. But once again, the standing question is to say the man is not there. As in nowhere to be found doing any big type of interviews. Even if you got to call into the radio station and say, you know what? My child's case has been cracked all the way open in 2017. I am the father. I want to know where she is. And not only that. Whatever has happened to her, I need to find out. So I need to place myself somewhere where I can be seen. Even if it's on D.L. Hughley's show. Is he still on the air? I think he is. D.L. Hughley. Whoever. D I mean, you got The Breakfast Club with Charlemagne the God and Angela Yee. They're, in fact, black. Seeming this whole thing has been called out about the race issue of black missing children not being shown plastered. Excuses are even in that because to know that everybody is looking at Kamaya, the young child that went missing at birth and knowing everybody is jumping all over that because she's black as in them wanting to show her on TV and her father and mother going off like they did on Lana Fix My Life, right? The own network link is provided below. That That's in fact my family, as I stated before. How many times? But to know that that young Kamaya... Mobley, I like to say Mobley, Kamaya Mobley has went missing, right? At birth. And now here it is years later, what, 18, 19 years later? Here it is. She's been found 
being raised by somebody else and everybody is all over that so usually people when people go missing people be all over that sort of thing so there's in fact excuses on Asia's mother and father's end of why they're not putting their self out there being an example of a black face showing your face when something like that happens, you put yourself out there, you don't hold back, as in conceal evidence and information and everything else, right? And so I just feel that excuses are there or something. So with the father, when you look at his face, even in the photograph, I'm like, man, not saying psychopathy could be there because even the mother kind of like portrays a form of psychopathy. I don't know, because to not show too much whatever emotion is to almost say right and so pertaining to it it just i think more interviews i stated that how many times more interviews have should has should have been done and that's the mother and father's choice but once again even for a father if he's not going to show himself to be an example for black men to step up to the plate to say you know what this is how you handle it when your child goes missing dear black community and him do that himself the father asia's father it's an ask, well, where is he? Outside of Shelby Star. But even the mother is doing that. And if once again, if you don't have time off of work, make time. Because, see, a job is important, but not as important, not as, as important as your child going missing. There's all type of ways that a job supervisor or whatever will offer condolences and even that, as in allowing you to get some type of time off from work. Yes. As in using up days in which it got stored away to even go do an interview on a Tavis Smiley. Why? I mean, what in the world? I'm just throwing out names as I go. And yet nowhere. Tavis Smiley is one. Of, is he still on the ear? Let me check and see myself. Because Tavis Smiley, I be so busy doing what I'm doing. But Tavis Smiley has access enough that if the man is no longer on the air, he's going to in fact have somebody else blast. Asia Degrees name because that's even what he does connections is just that in the room of the celebrity in the fashion and form of fashion of that nobody can stand up and do Asia Degrees parents work for them they in fact have to get involved themselves of putting themselves out there Nobody is going to nobody is going to come in and look for you and your child. You got to, in fact, go to it as in mass media. Tavis Smiley. Tavis, Tavis Talks. You want to find Tavis Smiley? TavisTalks.com. Even I remember Tavis Smiley, and I'm much more younger than the parents. What happened with Tavis Smiley with PBS? Did it go bad? Did it was it a deal gone bad? Tavis Smiley is I where was I at? But still, Tavis Smiley, oh okay. See when all of us are got a lot of stuff going on, that type of stuff we can't sit all day watching a person like Tavis Smiley and the mess up he has done. Or whoever has done PBS suspended distribution of Tavis Smiley back in December of 2017. Many of us can't really sit watching that all day and yet a parent who is trying to find a child would in fact tie themselves to an individual, maybe not Tavis Smiley himself, but somebody that has that much power. That, that much power gain as well as potential. Because see, see, Oprah Winfrey has already did it. She already put herself out there enough to show Asia's face as well as display it but you can't sit back waiting on other people pertaining to mass media to come and find you and even come find your child you gotta in fact place yourself there because as has been known and said even blacks trying to get record deals these days even that sort of thing is not happening because nobody is looking everybody else is too busy the the field of the work of even FBI cases going unsolved some of them how things get messed up in the miscommunication is because they're so busy working their team of people working on so many cases that if you let that stuff bypass your eyes as you you being a parent that sort of thing possibly will never get solved because they'll oftentimes forget that you and your child are waiting for a resolution 
So you can't sit back and say, let the FBI do their job as the mother has stated. That's a no-go. Because more than likely, as they're, as they're standing there, hold on. More than likely, as you stand in there waiting for the FBI to do their job, they're in fact working on other cases. That's why you stay on those type of people. My mom had to show me that game of not letting people just handle your stuff for you. You'll never get nothing resolved, recognized, or anything. Let me tell you. Despite even the case being cracked back open by FBI pertaining to Asia Degree. Because if something comes up, a more heavier case that's outside of Asia, seeming they don't have enough evidence, sub substantial evidence to go on the FBI, if another bigger case come along and say it has more ingredients involved, as in more evidence than Asia, better trust and believe they're going to push her case to the side so that they can see what whatever because they got more evidence pertaining to other cases. And that's how that sort of thing gets pushed back. To not have enough evidence is more likely to get pushed back. And that's how many cases get unresolved. And then somebody else walk up and say, you know what? Let me take the time to review this young child's case. See, when I got new fresh eyes, whoever, a new FBI agent or private investigator or whoever, and say, you know what? This child's case has been pushed to the side too long, pertaining to people not having enough evidence, the FBI. So let me work the case myself. That's what somebody else would, but you don't want to wait that long. You want to, in fact, put yourself out there so you don't have to wait at all. As in ride the FBI's back. That's the point of position of parents, more so a father than a mother, because see, he would even have, the father would have more in common with the FBI more so than the mother because he's a man. And yet you do have women working these cases, but more men sometimes are more pronounced as in, you know, doing doing things, getting things done because they're out in fields and all that other stuff, even at night, yes. FBI looking and trying to trace and find back and look and scope. And so the father, I just be looking at that man with a side eye and two extra glances like that. Like what is going on with even him? Gotta take time off of work to at least show you care about your child and doing interviews, doing more of them. Bill Cosby messed himself up all the way that's why I say you can't really trust stuff at face value, even if it's got a big name, right? Bill Cosby just went and lost the whole game. Bill, Go Bill Cosby just went and psyched himself out and thinking he would have gotten away with something in which he didn't, right? That's a, just a mess up because I would have said, you know what? The parents should have even went to Bill Cosby because even he is the biggest thing on the planet. But I guess not anymore, as in no longer, seeming he did what he done. Spanish fly? I'm thinking Spanish fly is something you put in a meal. <laughs> as, on the, as on the stove. Spanish fly? I'm thinking you want to have some tequila or something with that, right? Or is that what that is? Let me look that up. Spanish fly. I'm thinking because, see, I'm thinking that the name of that sounds like a Mexican drink, as in a Mexican beverage, but it more so sounds like something you would, in fact, sprinkle in your meal. A hotness, tangy hot flavor, Spanish fly. But this old man, old hag and drag, Bill Cosby himself, I say drag because he painted a face in which wasn't real, which is where the drag part come from. But this man is sitting up here dousing stuff in people's drinks. Spanish fly. That has a little tang to it. That that what is so funny is cuz of how old the man is and yet he was doing that back in his younger days. But I'm thinking like where did these people come up with these sort of things, even the name? Spanish fly. That is, that, that's just, that's uncomprehendable. I'm going to have to even look deeper into that. Because, yes, if you got a missing child, Bill Cosby, in fact, would have been the one that you would go to in broad daylight to help have him put your child's name out there. Yes, and this is no laughing matter because anytime a black child, yes, black child goes missing, you, in fact, want to tie yourself to something bigger 
outside of just regular mass media who you think is going to come scope you out to put your child's name on blast that's not a go you go to celebrities they're the biggest thing in the universe or so it's been said but bill cosby can't do that sort of thing because he just tainted himself as well as everybody else because to, to take advantage of a woman is to not only make yourself look bad you make her look bad as well so let me get to what i was saying i talked 20 minutes in 20 20 yes 20 minutes and 35 seconds in so going back to the nightlight trust and believe i'm still side eyeing yes side eyeing that father yes i am from a distance as is which i remain as well as the mother right but something is a little bit off as in leary pertaining to the family but that's not to bash anybody no it's not no it's not it's crime involved a crime case so you're looking from a distance looking from the outside in something is in fact a no-go as in a move okay so nightlight ah let me think okay a night like this is in fact a good question i bet fbi themselves possibly didn't even question this one that's why i'm throwing it out there right night like a young child many children are in fact afraid of the dark and yet they can't sleep with in the dark because they fear it so what many parents loving nurturing tight-knit parents would in fact do to prevent the fear and nightmares of sleeping in the dark despite you got a brother laying on the side of the other side of the room that in itself would help slow down fear a little bit but only so much because even children have nightmares or have dreams in which wake them up when they're deeply timid and sometimes those dreams are not the best dreams and sometimes they can even point in position to say a boogeyman and even the brother being in the room is not going to help resolve that. I mean, it can, which is could possibly be why the young child was laying next to his bed, right? Which is why I'm calling it out. Maybe even young Asia, I feel she was being molested. Yes, I do. But to say if that sort of thing wasn't at play, maybe the child, in fact, feared the dark, sleeping in it, despite having a brother that far away in the room, right? And so... We all have nightmares, whether you want to or not. Sometimes you can eat too much, go to bed, and there's a nightmare imposing itself on you, right? As walking right up on you in the dark, and you don't know it's coming. I think O'Brien being in her room sleeping would have calmed that down just a bit. But if you know your child fears the dark, why not just turn a nightlight on and keep it on? As in, when you're going to put them to bed, put it then. Or even set it on a timer itself. My mom had one of those. She had a timer that she plugged into the wall. And in fact contained a nightlight which plugged into it. So the nightlight will come on at a certain time. And then it will go off at a certain time. That's for people that got children that don't know. Pay attention to your children's fears. So a nightlight. To fear the dark. Wait. What did I say? To not leave a hallway light on or even a light in the house a child can see. If if Asia was living in the house, depending on how dark it was in that house that, that night, early 4 a.m. when she left, if there was not enough light in that house, trust and believe somebody would have heard her making her way out, as in the sound effects. Leaving because... To be too dark in an environment is to bump and bang into stuff and knock it over. And as you're knocking it over, somebody is going to, in fact, wake if they're not too deeply asleep. They're going to wake. But I'm thinking even a young child such as O'Brien, who isn't able to reach deep, deep sleep because he's a light sleeper, would have even heard that. As in something being knocked over, as in banged over by a nine-year-old child who could barely see, making her way out the door. So how lit was the house, in fact? The inside of the house, I'm questioning. I'm questioning where everybody else don't want to go. I'm questioning. Because this sort of question, in fact, woke me up while I was asleep. Yes, it did. It, in fact, woke me up while I was asleep. It said, you know what? Because in our room, in my room, I should say, not in our room, but it, the turtle tank in which we have 
will sit in the living room with a light on the heat lamp to keep the, the turtle has to have vitamin D that's nutrition right so he don't die I took the tank and put it in my bedroom so that I can have some light at night 60 watts maximum at that right but sometimes that light in fact dims a little bit which is why I needed it but pertaining to that children a lot of times don't want to just sleep in the pitch black I know I wouldn't and not only that I'm thinking a parent that really love and provide for their child, if they know that, they will leave some light somewhere, glowing somewhere in that house at night, just to radiate just enough for her to see as it make her way through down the hall, however her, whatever was set up, the bedroom layout, floor plan, so that she can get to the bathroom. Or even to the kitchen if she needs some water or something. So that's why I question how dark the house was and if there was a light. Because if O'Brien was such a light sleeper once again, he would have heard her banging into something. And not only that, I question of if the parents had a bedroom door that was closed or possibly locked. The night she disappeared, I mentioned that in my other video, because to even be a parent, two parents laid up in the bed sleep, possibly snoring. Sometimes people can't even hear on top of their own snoring, as funny as that sounds, and yet they can't. So... To walk past a door, bedroom door being closed, a young Asia is to possibly the parents themselves not even be able to hear it. But if it's dark, she will in fact bang into something. And for some people, light sleeper, that will have you wide awake. And not only that, that will have you in fact tell your parents. That will have you tell, yes it would. You're not going to lay up in bed and then not say, well... Mom and Dad, Asia, I heard her banging into something, and you wait till later on to tell. No, you will wake them up right then and go tell your mom and dad. Okay. And I, not only that, you will tell right then, being a child, you will tell that when you didn't hear her coming back into the room, because even that could pinpoint to a runaway car, as in you're telling your mom and possibly them looking out the window door, seeing her leave or something. So why wasn't that? I question if it happened the banging so uh banging into objects okay i said while in the house banging into objects while leaving the house if it was too dark yes i just said that i said was a tv or even a light near or around the tv near the door ah that's almost like a washing machine cycle the way that i stated that when I said, was there a TV or even a light near or around the TV near the door, near the door, that's like going and rewind while you're going forward, right? The question. Directions, yes. We're questioning, which is why I wrote it that way. So was there a TV as well as a light somewhere in the environment by the door of where Asia could have supposedly walked out of? I don't think she did. But just in case, let's question if that could have happened. Because depending on how dark a room is, even a TV provides illumination. As in lighting the atmosphere. And if a light is somewhere even around that and yet it's not bright enough to see, it still is light enough to make yourself your way out the door. But on top of that, I got to question even that. And the light of spear of why didn't Asia take it upon herself to grab her coat? If she, if Asia was able to have lighting enough to make herself go out the door, why didn't she take it upon herself to say grab her coat? Is it could, is it a possibility that she could have been being picked up or something in the driveway? Because if the dogs was picking, I'm sure and believe. Because FBI, they know what they're doing. But trust and believe, there would have been a little, little, little bit of lingering scent. I'm sorry if I extended that long. I got stuck in my words. The tongue twist. So I'm thinking there would have been a little bit of lingering scent somewhere outside of just that driveway. Possibly somewhere near the curb. Which is why I question why didn't the kidnapper abductor 
pick her up earlier in the day, knowing that people don't like to stand out in the rain, even near a curb. This whole situation is so pronounced. Right? But I'm thinking some scent would have been lingering somewhere because see, check this. Check it out with no mic stand involved. If dogs, if the FBI is able to say the furthest we got with the scent was to the driveway, that shows you just enough how much a scent is able to, in fact, linger. Because remember, that driveway is not covered by anything. And yes, as you go, scent does travel in the air. Yes, it does, as in the move, right? But even there's a little bit of percentage of travel of even that, as in right there where the driveway was, as in getting to it. So you mean tell me there was no lingering scent beyond that, and yet there was some scent right there? That's a backtrack in itself, as in I just took it there. That more than likely whatever happened to the young girl possibly happened in the four walls of her house. It had to. Ain't no way no, no scent going to be lingering at no driveway just enough for police to pick that up. And yet for it to not linger a little bit by a little bit a few steps away from that driveway. As in on the driveway itself a little bit off in the distance. That does not make sense. It does not add up. Because if that was a case of even a scent dying out, then that scent, the majority of the percentage of which police found, that would in fact have died out as well. Get what I'm saying. To turn a loose is just to get even in that. As in the getting got, right? The situation. The car, however, was positioned pertaining to dimensions and all that. More than likely, that car had to be parked outside right in the driveway. So what car was in fact parked there as police was checking out the scent of him trying to find out what vehicle could have taken Asia? What, what car was sitting next to where the scent was found? Well, there it goes. More likely, whatever happened in the situation, I just keep thinking that since it happened at home. You're going to have a, even if it's a little bitty trace of a bubble scent or something. No, that don't happen, right? A bubble. But there will be one little somewhat particle of something a dog would in fact even pick up maybe even by the sidewalk itself in front of asia's family's house a small trace a little lingering because everything has a lingering to it we're we're particle matter right we are in fact particle matter gas in a sense when you poop or past gas, us living human breathing beings, that in effect holds a scent, right? Maybe the rain would in fact kill that off, right? But I don't think completely. Because to pass gas is to leave a scent behind, despite somebody walking away. Somebody could possibly come in the room a little later and say, you know what? Hmm. That's just giving an example that I don't think, I don't think because if that scent was able to sit there in the pressurized rain in which it was, right? If that scent and being doused by rain on top of that, if that scent was able to linger like that, as in stay, stay settled in that one position, that points to one thing, but not only that, that is to say if she moved a little bit farther than that somewhere along that driveway, or even somewhere along the sidewalk, just a little bit of scent would have been there as well. As in her walking down the road, a child walking down the road. Can't tell me that. That that in itself is, is completely off. And if she walked down the road, more than likely a little bit of her scent would have lingered possibly at the end of the block somewhere. You just don't have a little scent. Have a little scent lingering there and not have it lingering somewhere else even if it's a small just a little bit small puff because a dog nose has to be strong enough to even pick that up right but even marijuana as in the stench is known to linger in some people's clothes for days despite them even being in the rain that sounds, that doesn't go with that piece, as in what I said, solving the puzzle. No, it doesn't go completely. 
But just trust and believe even scent enough is there long enough to linger somewhere. As in being picked up. That 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 doesn't make sense to me. That in itself was completely out of line. I'm like, no, there there is in fact no way that sort of thing. Oops. Something is, is off about that because if you're going my thing is this, if the rain is going to kill a scent, then let it kill that thing all the way. And not just have the the prints uh, say the footprints in the form of a scent standing right there outside of her house. That points enough. If if the rain is really killing a scent off, it would in fact kill it all the way to the fact there's nothing there at all. That is what I'm trying to say. So was I mean, was this scent of some kind? Was there trees overcasting even that? As in where the dogs were sniffing at? Because depending on the raindrops coming down, even some of that tree matter up above would in fact block some of the detail of the rain. As in it not being able to fully break down the scent. Because any form of obstruction is just that, right? It will prevent something from being completely... Let me pause for one second. Oh... Uh... A tree, if a tree is overhead, as in the overcast, and the police dog is standing there, I'm thinking and trust believe that even that rain would somewhat be an obstruction from killing the scent all the way off. Because that's just what the tree is, an obstruction. I bet many, the average mind, don't even think about this sort of thing, right? You got to understand, if there's a drenching downpour like this, torrential, something has to be able to somewhat block, obstruct, right? To hold on, I'm thinking to a scent. It will have to. So maybe possibly a tree was there right there or something around there in that atmosphere, but above or something. Because, as they said, they said, well, uh, torrential rain, something about it kills off the scent. But if no obstruction was there, as in a tree, then all scent, I'm thinking, let me think. Because, see, yes, obstruction, in fact, plays a part in some of this. Yes, it does. You can't tell me it don't. The point of a tree is as the rain is falling... The rain is falling is going to in fact slow down the speed of either even the rain itself the the still even if there's a heavy drench or downpour a tree would in fact slow up the speed of even the rain itself as in it coming down because remember it's obstructing just that it's going to continue the drench but still slow the speed of the raindrop somewhat that is in fact common sense so and me saying that that would in fact pinpoint to maybe a tree was there and that was how they were able to pick up the young child's scent. Because how is no scent able to be found as an extracted anywhere else? There should be some scent somewhere along the way lingering. A tiny drop. And yet scent ain't even a drop, but once again it's still particle, right? So you can consider that even the drop. That's long drawn out. I'm sorry. I got carried away. Hold on. So, because I'm in question, like, how does that happen? How does that happen? A kidnapper, more than likely, if that sort of thing took place, had to have parked and positioned his car right where that scent was found at. And if somebody else's car is parked there, such as a parent or whoever, then they had to have done it. Because that's just common sense. Nothing else is in alignment. As in the will alignment and the scope out is completely off. That just flew directly off the track is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Wait. Do they leave their hallway? Let's go back to the lighting. The night light. Despite me getting whatever. Carried away. Do they leave their hallway light on in the middle of the night? Or at all at night? 
I'm thinking parents would want to leave some light even outside of the children's bedroom and outside their own bedroom. They would want to leave some light or some TV on or some light or some form just so young children can make their way around in the dark enough that if they got to go to the bathroom or need some water. Because even bones can be broken in that. Moving around, yes, children, that sort of thing has happened in the past. Moving around and then stumping your toe against, say, a couch or a table, and there you go. Completely undeveloped toes, fully developed, or yes, undeveloped toes, completely crushed by something standing in your way trying to get to the kitchen or whatever because you done crashed into something, a child. Okay, so what areas of Asia's house were lit that night before she left or even in the days to come? I'm in question of this nightlight thing. Was there a night like in the in the child's bedroom? Was there a night light in Asia's bedroom? So that she can see something and not the boogeyman, right? Okay, so she, yeah, because she did make her way, supposedly they said that she went to the bathroom. So there, in fact, had to be some light there, yes. I'm asking, I'm answering my own question. There, in fact, had to be some light there for even for her to go to the bathroom. But still, on top of that, I want to go deep inside the child's bedroom. She made her way out to go to the bathroom. But then she came back. So you still have to question... Was lighting involved in that? As in when these children would sleep in bed at night, was there any type of nightlight position anywhere? Because I'm thinking if my child is afraid of the dark, I don't want them in that room. Um, What is it? I don't want them in that room. And this is for parents that's watching me that got young children. If your children is afraid of the dark, don't leave them in the room without a nightlight because even that can lead to bedwetting it can lead to bedwetting as them being unafraid to get up to open the door because they might think the boogeyman would waste them afraid to get up to open the door to go to the bathroom so the fear in that would in fact make some children in fact wet themselves because some of them might think well i, I can hold it and i go when the lights are up as in when the daytime come and then in them holding it, some people have had dreams. My, I myself as a kid had a dream. I was in fact on the toilet when I wasn't. And that in fact led to bedwetting. Yes, on that particular night that I in fact wetted myself as a child. That sort of thing can lead to that, which is why you want to in fact put a nightlight in the room. Yes, you do, because some children have been known to even get beat for that, wetting the bed. Parents, Some parents don't like that, their, their children wetting the bed. Hold on. Wait, I'm trying to see. Yeah, some, some children do, in fact, get beat beat by their own parents for wetting the bed because not only do they got to clean up the mess they in fact got to clean up the mattress on top of that you know what i'm saying and then when summer come along then the stench is there if they can't get the stain and everything else out of the mattress but still you shouldn't beat your kid if they wet the bed that's a no-go because even authorities will look at that as child abuse because they would think that, you know, the child could have had nightmares or something. And that's why they went to bed. So I said it's hard enough trying to get past people in even their bedroom in the middle of the night if it's dark and you can't see your way around. Yes, you will be knocking things over.
I wonder, I, did I ask that? I, I think I asked that before. How how dark was it on the outside of the house? As in the street, like, they call it road. I call it street because being city, right? How dark was it on the outside of the house? Just as much as how dark was it on the inside of the house? That just, I mean... All of this doesn't make sense. It, it don't, it don't, something is, is not, it's like completely off. All of it is completely off. A young, timid, nine-year-old girl, people want you to believe that, like, she really left? Like, we're, what? So, that's, that's it. What do you think for the viewer? Do you think a nightlight was involved in this, as in Asia's bedroom? Because, see, even if a nightlight is not in a young child's room, and say she's afraid of a dark, afraid of the dark, and say it possibly um, abuse was going on or something like that, molestation, even that could be unseen and unfound. Yes, in the dark, as in how dark a room is, if a nightlight is not turned on. Any predator could get away, even child predator or whatnot, even if they're living in the four walls of the house. They could even themselves get away with that sort of thing in the dark, despite another child being in the bedroom. I said it before, some parents have been known to even get their young children involved. And that, not just one, but other children that are usually in the same room together. I'm thinking to myself, why would a young child... I myself, I got rid of my bed because I practice Asian everything just about right. And many of them, they have desks in, in which they work on the floor. I like that. I'm going to have to get me. Right now, I got my two MacBooks. They sit somewhat prop up off the floor, right? But I got to get me a proper Asian desk, right? But I myself got rid of my mattress because, first of all, it was old, right? And not only that, it got to be hard on the back and completely not gentle. As in you're feeling spring, <laughs> springs coming up through your back, right? That sort of thing you don't because I think even that will point to arthritis over time or something. It has to. If a bed is too hard and it's old and you're laying on it and it's dusty on top of that and you're sneezing and all that in the middle of the night like myself, yes, in which I was, I had to get rid of my bed myself. So I had got used to sleeping on the floor. Yes, I did. But it's carpeting. I got like, there's the carpeting because I'm in an apartment. The carpeting is layered is what I should say. It's carpeting. And then I got a, uh, what do you call it? Kind of like a tarp that's over that, right? And then I got something up underneath. And then I got a, like, a. it's not vinyl, but it is kind of somewhat. It's black right everything matches my room or whatnot and so with that being said it's cushioned just enough for me to sleep and not only that i got a whole bunch of pillows so it's actually comforting but that is asian themed sleeping on the floor that's what they practice over in china over in asia they practice i like i like that i had to get used to it at first or not sleeping on the bed right so that made me question why was she because even that is is important detail of why would a child sleep on the floor if she has her own bed as in it being their position for her to lay on with me i don't have but i'm a grown adult who chose to throw my bed away right her squeaked they said her bed squeaked right so that could possibly be one reason but i'm still thinking that's not enough for a child to want to go sleep on on the side of say her brother's bed that's that's not enough because there's a lot of children out here who in fact their bed squeak matter of fact back in the day i had a canopy bed that squeak remember the canopy bed those was old school i don't even know if they make those no more but canopy beds they were like they had the rods on each end as well as on the oh can you see they had a rod here a rod here and then a rod in the back that was mine's was like up against the wall right 
they were like railings or whatnot on each side of the bed and my bed in fact squeaked but i still used it that is so you know what about this whole case thing it is so weird how you can be a human being and have much in common with other human beings outside of you yet you're not even knowing them or never met them that that's so strange to me because I'm looking at this see I use myself I said before I use myself for example in these videos because to come from a heavy religious background in which Asia did it's to know we have a lot in common pertaining to that right to know you had a squeaking bed in that form and manner or sometimes even the bed itself squeaking irks you and get on your nerves as in the sound which would make somebody want to sleep on the floor but I never, the only time I slept on the floor, and I was a lot of times far away if I slept on the floor, is if I was playing with something, my own toys. Yes, even at that age, around 9, 10, 11 years old, playing with my toys, and then say not wanting to climb in bed, go to bed. I would just lay right there with my dollhouse and all that other stuff. Yes, the junk that my mom used to buy or whatnot. So... That's off the hook. I still right now, yes, I do. I in fact, yes, sleep on the floor right now. Because I got used to it. And I and my mom, before I got rid of the bed, she said, No, you need to get another bed. I said, No, I don't. Because first of all, even in the summertime, when you get the sweating and all that other stuff, if you ain't got no plastic on your bed, that in itself is unsettling at night. Yes, it is sweating and you're drenched and you're all on the your moisture is all up on the on the bed and all that other stuff that's suffocating in itself right but then if you got plastic covering the mattress that in itself that's a recipe for disaster as well a person can die and even that people parents even parents need to be aware of that the the um the suctioning of, say, even the plastic on a mattress, on a young child's mattress, you got to be cautious of that. Because, see, some children chew on stuff like that. Some people bury their head into all of that. That's sort of thing you want to take off, as in get, get rid of, and possibly buy something else from, say, a bed store that sells bedding that you, that you put on there. It's like the material, like how NASA uses. I'm trying to think of. The material it's not foam it's not foam but it was somewhat remind you of the space suits and stuff like that that NASA wear that material is not a cloth it's more like a it's not a rubber I can't even think of the name but for that people that when they go up in space that material right because even that helps with wetting when you sweat but I still won't want my body up laid up against that material in the summertime. It don't feel right. Sticky and all that right. But I'm just saying if you're a parent, you really don't want to have plastic on your child's bed. The plastic that comes, the mattress comes in from, say, the store. Or even if you put it on there yourself, you want to be cautious with that. Because as I said before, children are known to bury their face too far into that sort of thing. And there you go. As in them suffocating themselves, not being able to breathe while they're asleep. Got to get rid of that. Um. So, I'm trying to think what I was going to say because I just got lost in thought with that. But, um, me sleeping on the floor. That's why I had to call that out because I'm like, well, why was she sleeping on the floor? But if you're going to sleep on the floor, you would, in fact, want to sleep next to your own bed and not way over there. See, the only way I could see a child sleeping that far, that's why the position of the nightlight is so important. The only way I could see a young child at nine years old sleeping that far away from her own bed is if she's afraid of something. As in something in the bedroom or something imposes fear or something. And possibly the darkness itself could be molestation. Could be some form of abuse 
because she would think or something if say if because i said before young children sometimes find one another as in have sexual stuff even brother and sister yes it, it has been known as in a form of incest and the detail that sort of thing has to be called out whoever gets mad they have to just be mad because children have been known even at that age to find one another because remember they're still developing and even curiosity is there right and if you if you got because there's sensation down there. I remember being a kid and having sensation down in the PP area, private area, right? But you don't really know what sex is because you, if you ain't been exposed to it. But if you don't really have, say, it's just to me, there's sensation down there at that age where children can enough feel it. Because I've heard even children that age and even younger say certain things in a sexual sexual manner to let you know where their thoughts are thinking as in where it is but they don't really fully comprehend that sort of thing as in the adult activity but they would in fact experiment which is where the curiosity and itself come from at that age 9 10 11 years old that's an experimental age because see children at school Many of them, you hear it on the news and have in the past how some of them children have been exposed to the simple fact that they were fondling somebody at school at that age and sometimes younger, right? That's their bodily, that's bodily chemical connection at play and not just the child themselves, really, unless, say, they were molested. Then they will do that sort of thing to other children, but sometimes not as in fondling other children. So that's why I said... If a brother and sister, if why she was on the floor, could have possibly been, if she wouldn't be molested by her father, then maybe her and her brother could have been fondling one another. Who knows? And you can't disagree with me on, on that and say, no, that can't be a possibility. Because remember, to not live in the household is to not be there. As in the not, no. People got to use common sense. So, people that sometimes are molested children because i was watching these two gay guys and they do videos yes on youtube right here one of them uh lives in atlanta georgia right and one of the guys that was being molested he was a kid a young child being molested by a grown man adult he would say how the man would come into the room and in fact make him lay on the floor so that he can molest him because of the bed, you know, with that sort of thing. I guess it's only proper for molestation to go down in the dark on the floor, right? But this gay man was, was speaking about how that sort of thing. And his mother ended up finding out. Yes, the gay guy, his mother ended up finding out that sort of thing was happening as this, this grown man was molesting her child. Because when he would wake up. When he would wake up the next day, the mother would come into the room here and there, right, sporadically in the daytime, and always question why was his pillow on the floor. She couldn't make sense of that, like something is not right here, something is wrong for my son to be laying on the floor, sleeping on the floor, knowing there's a bed there. It was more, yes, as it unsolved, and I ain't gonna even tell the whole story about that, but that's in fact what was happening. That grown man, instructed that young little boy to in fact lay on the floor so that he can molest and get off on him yes he did i watched i sat and watched that whole video because they were in, they were in fact interviewing one another but the owner of the youtube account was more so interviewing him they were just taking the time to tell one another story of how molestation goes down in relation to even the gay community and I wanted to hear that because I myself had never heard of anything that in itself showed me to even keep an eye out on my own nieces and nephews of if somebody is doing that look to see for a floor situation and for me myself to sleep on the floor I love to sleep on the floor but I wouldn't take the time to be stroking on no young kids I myself I love old people People that, no, nah, I was about to say, people that, you know, don't know how to properly fit their own gums in their own mouth. <laughs> That's a joke. But I like, I'm attracted to older people. I can't really, there's nothing a child can do for me. That's why I'm trying to make sense of this. There's nothing a, a child can do for you because remember, 
and you're doing stuff with a child at that age, if you're getting off on the child, they're not able to do that sort of thing with you, I don't think, because remember, a body is not fully developed. At 19 years old, I'm going to have to even check and research that because I can't even remember how old I was in memory of when I started wearing bras, training bras. I thought you don't start wearing training bras until you're like, 12 11 or 12 let me think i'm trying to think how my niece is i said before when i because i mentioned i used my niece here on a video example she in fact with her started her period yes she did that sort of thing has to be called out pertaining to this as well as in the case you know, trying to understand uh, how old children are when they start their period in the realm of them not being fully developed. They're, they bleed. I remember I started bleeding somewhere around having a menstrual cycle. I think I was like 12, 11, maybe 11, 12, something like that. Eleven or 12 or was I 13 I think I was somewhere around 11 somewhere around then and even wearing training bras that's not I'm thinking if I'm a grown man and I love to have sex and play around and get loose in the juice or something right I'm thinking what you want something grown fully grown completely grown because there's so many things that a grown mind, a woman, a grown woman will understand in which a child won't. Like, who wants to sit there and be guiding somebody how to do this? You want to, to me, you don't want to, if you're, if you're a man that love women, you don't want, I myself, yes, I, I like them older. My mom going to be mad about that when she see this video. But to say is just, to say, it's the honesty. We're human. If I'm a grown man, I'm going to want a stallion. I'm not going to want no child that I got to be saying, you know, we'll lay right here and then you got to do it like this and you got to do No, you want somebody that is fully, you ain't got to tell them nothing. Matter of fact, they're going to overtake you as an overpower you, the woman herself. Like, that's how you get down. But I guess the creepy fight man don't want that sort of thing. He wants somebody he can just tell. That's not cool. That that in a sense is is, is not cool because you can even damage a young child's bodily organs and even that she might be infertile once she grow up or something crazy like that but yes i have to i have to scope that out because if i'm sleeping on the floor at night i know my reason and my position of being right on my floor it's comforting but not only that i got a question why was a young child there as in her bedroom sleeping at night that don't, to me, it, it's still, I don't know, it's just something off about that. That don't look right and it don't add up. Because, see, that in itself is examination where it, it, it in fact points back to fear. Fear of something. Fear of intrusion. Molestation, yes. It, it points to something in the realm of fear. You just don't go lay n next to a bed of, say, a brother because... That almost looks like a sign of you want him to even protect you. But you possibly be in that age because you could even get striked, possibly by an abusive parent. If you are even getting in the bed with your, I think for, see, I think, see, something, that's where that's not right. Like, there's something off about that. The laying in the danger area of that. Because, see, if a young child is fearful of something and say she share a bed with, no, not a bed. She shares a bedroom with her brother and she fears something or fears or fear someone in the form of an intrusion or even the dark. I'm thinking she's more than likely going to lay at the foot of the bed of her brother. And then tell her mom and dad, tell her mom and dad, I get scared at night. Because, see, even when the mom would wake up and open the door, she would say, Asia, why are you in bed with O'Brien? Get in your bed. Or, no, it's time to get up and go to school at 630. They said they woke them up at 630 every day to go to school. That don't, that don't, that's not right. Something about that is, is completely off. 
as in the unfairness. Because see, even law enforcement should be questioning this just as much as I am of if a child is that scared of whatever, right? That points, that object of laying on the floor, that in fact points to fear. But fear of what, right? She would in fact have put herself in her brother's bed at the foot of the bed. Because even children think like that enough to say, you know what? I'm saying there's, there's hyper awareness pertaining to children when fear is there. They don't care. See, some children are so fearful of dogs. They would in fact run out in front of a car just to get away from a dog. Yes, they will, right? And so that means that their awareness is there as in to what is there making them fearful of something, but they're not fully aware to putting themselves in danger and harm's way of an oncoming car is coming. Get out of the way, right? But if a child is fearful that someone is going to come into her room at night and say molest her, Yes, molest her as an intrusion on private bodily parts, right? Or if she fears something in that room, she's going to climb in bed with her brother and tell her, I need to sleep next to you. Come on, because they're old enough to talk like that. If she's old enough to play a basketball game or softball game or whatever she played in a room of sports, she was old enough to even say that. Come on, O'Brien, I got to sleep next to you because I'm scared. I'm scared or something. But if she's going to be abused by just sleeping at the foot of his bed, as in, see, an abuser in a household, they'll beat you just for even that. Saying, well, you know you got your own bed, so why would you go sleep in the bed with him? Let him sleep in his bed and you sleep. And they might possibly yank you by your hair in the process and rip a bow off with it, right? Abusive parents are seen enough to see what it is to see. Because to grow up in the hood, of the hoods is to see enough pronounced abuse for what it is in the way that some of these parents do their children beat them all upside the head in the face all in traffic and out in public right for people to see so a parent that's abusive would in fact not allow that sort of things uh, even her being fearful and timid not allow her to say lay and sleep at the foot of her bed because see that sort of thing in fact would prevent them from striking her down as in getting to her if there's abuse there as in beatings and stuff like that or even molestation because see even O'Brien would stand in the way of that his body his body being there stands in the way of an abuser actually getting to her so the point in position more than likely will be to make her lay and sleep on the floor after somebody done intruded on her personal private space sort of thing you don't do there's a there's a such thing as respect even for children. I mean, I can see if they're getting out of line and yet you're going to want to discipline them and the, however you discipline them, but you're not going to be say wanting to invade their private space or even down below. That's harmful enough and damaging to a child later on. That's how they get cracked out in drugs and become crackheads and all that other stuff. But an abuser is not going to care. They're just going to take advantage and walk away. That's what they do. That's in fact what an abuser do. Take advantage, walk away, and more than likely, if, if it's going on in the house, they're going to repeat it and then hide themselves, which is why I stand in question of why the father doesn't do as much interviews as he should. Some stuff just be so suspect. As in a call out, the nature. And see, when I lay on the floor every night like I do and say I'm not doing nothing after I done did everything else, that sort of thing will naturally play back in mind because to, to be looking and trying to figure out what could have happened to somebody at that age and then preferring to sleep on the floor. What, I mean, wouldn't a mother have even questioned that? See, the mother, police need to go back in and examine the mother. By asking her what was the point and position of Asia sleeping on the floor. Because if she was sleeping on the floor enough nights, more than likely the mother had to know about it. Remember, she was the one to open the door at 6.30 a.m. to wake them up. So Asia would have had to tell her along the way somewhere why she was in fact sleeping on the floor. A mother cannot live that long in a household with a child like that. And then 
the mother not pay attention well come on young baby if she really love her i don't think she fully do but if she if she did she would say come on open the door 6 30 oh asia baby why are you laying on the floor you should be in your bed why night after night you're laying on your floor but see if her husband will say molesting asia See, I'm in question of even his whereabouts as in at night, as in what time he would go to sleep. Because to sit out on a sofa for too long and watch TV is to pose a possibility of even him not going to go to bed in his own bed at night and say possibly creeping in the door of a young child, getting down with her, and yet nobody know about it. Because see, that sort of thing would have to be done as in hidden in the dark, right? Which comes to the light later on. That sort of thing between a husband having sex with his own child, something he gave birth to, would have to remain hidden with him being out on the sofa late at night, creeping into the room, even though O'Brien is there. See, an abuser don't care about nobody but himself enough to even do that, as in doing it, the act, with a child. He ain't gonna care if another child is in the room, because more likely he's much more abusive than just that. He would possibly threaten his own child over there with death if they even say anything. People that is sick and abuse do all type of things. They use threats and all that other type of stuff. Which is why people stay in that sort of thing. Because see, I can't really see, and I can, I can't really see a father creeping out of his own bedroom knowing he shares a bed with Asia's mother. And even the bed shaking just a little bit enough for her to feel in her sleep while she's deep sleep. Enough to wake her up that he's going to go out of the room early in the morning to possibly not go to the toilet, but go and rape her, his own daughter, molest her or whatever. And the mother would stay in that, as in stay in that. That's not the type of thing you would want to walk out on as in leave along with your children side by side holding hands with you. Yes, you would. Even if it's at night after you done caught him in the act doing it. I would in fact pack all my kids up and we would leave him right where that house is. Even if my name was on it. I would set up something to have even that closed out. As in the, uh, the house of where I live at with a possible child molester or whatever. If that sort of thing took place. Who knows and yet the standing question is just that. Because see some mothers in fact do go for their children being molested. Yes they do. By even the father himself because I told the story about how I in fact helped to start a poet society on a college campus yes I did me and other individuals had to sign what is considered the Constitution when you sign the documentation to get the the poetry to society going because it was tied in with the black student union of where we went to school we ran those two things together right and so pertaining to that there was an individual that was a member of the Poet Society along with myself. This individual was in fact having full blown sex with her father. They were lovers in fact with one another, which kind of when many of us found out later that was happening, we was in deep shock. And not only that, we was in deep, deep sympathy as well as remorse for the simple fact of the father that he could do that sort of thing. And yet her mother knew about it. There was times when her mother would in fact her mother would in fact there was a there was in fact a night where the mother yes would be outside of the actual bedroom and yet the father was in fact laid up on top of his daughter and having full-blown sex in the room of penetration enough to get the daughter pregnant but he didn't right the mother would be on the outside of the room as it was happening so these sort of things do in fact happen and which is why I'm questioning of what you did for me to be that close for around a person and that sort of thing took place and me finding out i was told i was told by the by the individual's best friend and they thought it was funny because they're like oh my gosh she was telling us about how she had her father jacking off and all this other stuff and how she, it feel good when he's inside of her getting off and all this other stuff right and i'm looking to myself I told them, I said, she got to go see a psychologist. She need to go see a therapist or somebody to fix that. And y'all got to stop sitting around laughing because the girl thought it was normal because she, more than likely she had been having this going on since she was a child. She told her, she told her best friend, which came and told me we were all close like that, 
came and told me that the mother was in fact watching daytime soap operas as her and her father was having sex in the mother's, come on man, in the mother's bed. Who does that? The father and the daughter was having full blown sex in the mother's bed while she was out watching daytime TV soap operas. That's the most interesting as well as craziest thing I have ever heard. The father, as I stated before, was around the area of Virginia, West Virginia, around that area, right? That sort of thing goes down as in at play. Yes, it does in, in those type of environments, right? But I just was in disbelief that that sort of thing went on because it went on for so long with this young individual. I'm not going to say her name. People would, in fact, who I know who I'm talking about if I say her name. But that sort of thing went on a little bit too long to the fact it got to be of normalcy to her. She thought that was normal for her father to lay on top of her and be penetrating her all hard and lovely like she was a grown woman. That's not that's not cool because what that points back to, the mother knew about it, allowing the father to, in fact, penetrate his daughter, her daughter, in their, in their bed and her not stop it, right? That points back that she had to be molested herself even at 8, 9, 10 years old. This individual, yes, the, the girl in which I'm speaking on, which that, that happened, it had to have started then. And not only that, the mother more than likely was cool with it even back then. That's molestation as well as rape. That sort of thing you stop and you don't let your husband be molesting your child in your bed while you, while you sit watching soap operas. That would almost point that something is in fact wrong with that mother to let that go down because even that is an invasion of private space of a child. So the individual, what I'm speaking on, yes, the girl that I just told the story of, her father just was killed recently, a few years ago. Somebody killed him, right? They all went to church and all that, but he got killed by somebody pertaining in relation to the church, but even that had to come out to the church. Yes, the father stood up in front of the church and the pastor and all of them made him confess to his little dirty deeds and what he did to his daughter, because even that's going to have her messed up for life because she took the time to stop having boyfriends just so she can sneak the hotels and stuff like that to have sex full blown with her father. She will give up on boyfriends just so she can save herself for her father. So it's, yes. Yes, said. That young girl didn't want to have no boyfriends because she wanted to continue having sex with her father. And not only that, when they would have sleepovers, as in her with the other friends that I was cool with and we was all, you know, close during that time of going to college, she would be at the sleepover be bragging about how she would be putting her father's D-I-C-K in her mouth to get him off. And laughing about it and joking about everything else and how they will play in the bedroom sexually yes the father and the daughter right together and the mom knew all this and she was a highly church-going woman and she did nothing to stop it in the process she would just leave out the room and let them two have the room and the father would be stroking and stroking and fondling all over the daughter and a daughter what was strange about it the daughter was so what's the word for it giggly about it she loved and enjoyed her father in that way of like say a uh what is it how like say how a, a father would have or just a man would have a young lover or something like that the daughter really liked that sort of activity the sexual nature and stuff of what they were doing under their household and roof so you can never say what question you can never say and not question and think Yes, what Christian people may or may not do. You, people cannot say that sort of thing. That sort of thing might not have happened because they were church going people. Well, if I just told you the story of the people in which I was connected to and the way they were handling their affairs with a daughter sleeping with her father and her loving it. At every single sleepover she having with girlfriends talking about she was talking about him like it was her boyfriend because she, in fact, made her father her boyfriend. She made her father her lover. But more than likely, he directed and guided her into that sort of thing because to be much more older 
is to be taken by the hand and guided into that sort of activity. You had to, and that sort of thing had to start very young with her. I can't see that sort of thing, or maybe it could have started older, but I just can't see a, a girl being in her early 20s and say, just sleeping with her father full blown. Something had to have led up to that, as in an introduction along the way, being a young child, and him slowly possibly rubbing on your hair and all this other stuff, getting the motion started, and then slowly easing his way into something else, stroking you a little bit lower, and then going down full blown in your pants and making you get used to it, and then lying to you in the process, possibly telling you how much he loved you or something. That in itself is sick. That's a form of sickness right there. Because the what the reason why I say it's a form of sickness is because you're intrude, intruding on, you have no respect for someone's personal space. That in, That's not consensual. That is, in fact, not consensual at all by law. Which is why I stated what I stated. Never, never uh, think because people as in family members are portraying themselves one way. Never just take that and run with that and think that is completely the truth. No, I don't think so. Because all type of things go down more so sometimes in children and houses of Christian houses. More so sometimes in sinners. Because to live and be a sinner is to just do that. As in not keep stuff hidden. Which is the point. In situation of you being a sinner is to be open in the first place. Sinners live openly is what I'm trying to say. And a lot of times they don't keep secrets. They don't care. Many of them talk crazy like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is funny. That man is in fact a harsh speaking entertainer. That's what all I got to say about that. But listen to me when I say that. Sinners live openly. Many of them don't live in secret. No, they don't. Because if they did... Live in secret, many of them would in fact be members of the congregation, say as in the church. So that is in fact why many people in fact walk away from the church because many of them know in the realm of identity they can't live up to the standard of church and the Holy Communion and all that. See, because the church tells you that we're not out bypassing molestation and all that. I won't speak on sexuality. The, ch the church tells you that sex is sinful if it's not done between husband and wife, right? And yet a large percentage of children that are being born through and from the church, as in from the outside going in, being a member of the church, many of them children are born out of wedlock. Womp, womp, womp. Right? <laughs> it's not a joke and yet it is, but it's, it's still the truth. To get froggy is just a state, right? And so, many of the, the majority of these children, any more so in black churches, are born out of wedlock. And yet people want to stand around judging you that you shouldn't be grown men and women having sex with other living beings, forgetting how we got here in the first place, right? The earth wouldn't even exist. And even that, was, was marriage even invented back in Adam and Eve days? I'm in question of that. Was marriage around? Was a hold up? Wait a minute, cause I I don't want to trip the game up too far and crack in too many jokes, cause a Christian might in fact get mad at me over the simple question of was marriage license in fact endorsed back then when Adam and Eve was born? I'm just I'm in question. Or was or was Adam and Eve in fact married at birth? I want to know, cause people want to tell me. Yes, they want to tell me. They know what my sexuality is. Sexual you can't you can't buy let my sexuality bypass your eyes and even that. I'm half woman and half man just as as God created me to be. Because even a universe cannot be completely balanced without both sexes as in genders. You got to have masculine as well as femininity because that in itself presents balance. And so for God to be made in God's image is to be just that being in human form. It's enough to say enough to say that even God, him or herself, is more likely in fact possessing both genders by title and definition of masculine and feminine. See to weigh this self to weigh something out is to weigh it all the way out. Understand it. 
the balance pertaining to yes relations even with god right christian people they tell you i'm not making fun of them no but even that is common sense when they want to say well god is a he somebody right now about to turn this video off because i'm about to get deeply heavy carried away and even that they want to tell you that god is a he and tell you that god is made in the form that humans are made in the form of God's image. Right? But even particle, a human nature particle, has to have something there as in the form of gender underneath or something as in the realm of science and scientificness. That ain't even a word, but it's about to be. As in my conclusion, where I'm about to end this out, because I don't want to get too deep where even that bypassed their comprehension of to be made in the image of something and say that being creates something of both sexes is to no, know in fact both sexes sexes are there and God the universe because you can't even animalistic tendencies has to come out of that as well because if a human is like this and you have animalistic tendencies enough to survive when I say I don't mean sexual in nature, but let a natural disaster hit and watch just how animalistic human beings will become in a rush as in protecting themselves from even death. So, yes, we, we in fact, humans have natural animalistic ways as well as we are consisting of both feminine and masculine ways internally, as well as God, wherever or universe, whatever you like to call it. But to be neutral on something is just that. It's to stand centered. That's where I stand. I ain't too I'm an androgynous. I ain't too masculine and I ain't too feminine. I'm just what the universe wanted me to be. The science. See, religious people a lot of times, they don't want to believe in sciences because they think that man is in fact playing God, right? But... To even have natural disasters, as in a tsunami or something else, is to know you got to have someone come get you out, as in be on the lookout for even you. When that sort of thing strike and not sit praying to the high one above or even sit calling out to Jesus for a search and rescue. That sort of thing, somebody else, as in a man, has to get involved in even that in the realm of the sciences of helping solving you so that you don't get carried away by a flood. So for religious people, they in fact should be in admiration of the sciences as well as the sciences more so than being mad and mean struck about even that, the sciences. Because all around us, there, there are people being going missing and undetected and undiscovered by the naked eye or even by 2020 vision or even by sunglasses where other people have to find them. So those sort of people are in fact scientists. They're not more than likely full-blown religious people because see, religious people oftentimes sit back and never question. They don't question. That's the point of following the religion in the first place is to just be set in stone as this is the ways that have been given to us by the Bible and we don't question nothing else beyond that. But not only that, they don't take the time to try to solve. They leave it up to God to solve and yet, to have no re resolution into that is to in fact pose problems that a possibility a problem is going to be unsolved forever if you don't let a scientist get involved in helping to solve the world's problems or you yourself play a scientist yourself and get involved in help solving that's not to down religious people no it's not the way that i speak it makes many of them mad and i can see why right because if you want to stay alive, you would, in fact, get involved in the investigation of even solving your own problems. And not just sitting back praying and waiting on religious texts to help figure it out. Because to wait too long is to, in fact, die in which many people are. In fact, that sort of thing is happening. People, people get cancer and they say, I'm just going to sit and pray about it and hope it's going to go away. But that sort of thing don't happen. It's not going to happen. Miracles happen every day, like my mom says. But that sort of thing, I'm thinking even God will want humans to play a play a part as well in his plan. 
because otherwise he wouldn't have created, created the humans themselves. He would in fact want them to get involved in their own ordeal or deed of helping to solve their own problems, at least at times. Can't sit back praying all the time as well as reading the Bible all the time. That's going to lead to, to nothing going nowhere. It's, yes, it is. It's nice if you believe in that. I'm not saying anything like that. And I'm not trying to make anybody distraught. And even what I just said. But the truth is just that. Can't knock down people that are trying to help solve and heal you. Even in that. Medicinal. Medicine and all the other stuff, right? So. Going back to what I was saying. I'm trying to get this video to be as long as possible until we cut off. That's the point of me making it, right? And yet I don't have no advertisement on my videos and I'm so happy because yes, I watch my own videos and yet I'm not trying to see any advertisement. Demonetization and monetization, I can care nothing about that, which is why you're able to in fact watch my video all the way through. I got a notice, I got a notice in my YouTube mail, <laughs> got mail. <laughs> I got a notice in my mail that somehow I was being demonetized over some video or something like that. And I'm like, am I supposed to even care about that? Because I don't get paid anyway. So why would they even alert me about something like that? That's not even crucial to me. What's more valuable is the information as in spreading it. Putting the information to work by gathering it and throwing it out there so that you, even you, the viewer, can learn something. I'm not trying to get paid anything. That's not even on my list. I can care nothing about that. Because see, there's many people out here that have money and yet they have no brain. <laughs> Rappers and singers, many of them, they like to sing and dance. That's not an insult because I am in fact a singer and rapper myself. Right? And no, I'm not jealous. But many of them can sing and dance and rap on top of it, yet they hold and possess no brain. Because if they did, they would in fact talk about the sciences in their song and not talk about who punched who in the face and not give you some evidence in detail to help solve that as in the better the situation. Instead of worsening it, the situation is what I'm trying to say. You're going to put out something like that being a celebrity, at least tell something of where you can try to help solve it. But to know, to have no solve is to have no brain. <laughs> Yes, I'm brown. I'm a, I'm a brown eye girl. I'm a brown eye girl. Yes, but no, not R. Kelly. Mm -mm. That type of thing I can't get with. And I can't get with individuals that intrude on young children's space. Because to do even that is to know you don't respect her. And if you don't respect her in the form of intruding on her body where she doesn't want it, it's to say more likely you don't love her. That's not saying Asia father, but if that sort of thing went down as in took place molestation in his house, then yes, I would in fact point this message to him because I fear nobody. And that's not disrespect on my end. But if you're going to abuse someone, and even if it's in the form of say molestation to make them want to leave, because you got to understand statistics of why somebody would want to leave their house in the first place by term definition of run away, because more than likely abuse, but sexual abuse, that's the very number one thing a lot of times. And then abuse, regular physical abuse, violence follows that. So to intrude on a child's space like that is to say you don't love her. And could have not loved her enough to even want to do that. Run away, leave away, get away with somebody else. Molestation could have in fact, because see I don't have respect for any type of man or even type of any type of woman as I stated before to invade on a young child's face down below in her pants. That sort of thing children don't like. That's common sense. They don't they don't like that sort of thing. And so if somebody in a family is doing that sort of thing, that's to show that they don't love her because if they do, they would in fact respect her wishes. They would in fact respect her wishes of not getting her involved in that sort of thing. They will go off somewhere and do that with somebody else's child. Because to say you don't want it, no, I don't want it, no, daddy, I don't want it, it's to respect just that. Or if it's a brother doing that, some brothers kill their sister, yes, 
people stand and question a John Bonet Ramsey. I I do too to this day. But to say I don't want it, Big Brother. I don't want it. Is to not po impose that sort of thing on them. If you do, it shows you don't love them because people that love people, in fact, don't disrespect your space. They give them their space just enough to breathe as an heir. Because, see, even in that could, could come death. People don't think about that. Even in that, even in that could come death, as in you're disrespecting somebody's space and it being a young child, as in you, as in the child not wanting you to do it and yet you're the father forcing yourself or brother that in itself could come death because somewhere along in that somebody is going to get struck upside the head or something yes that sort of thing will in fact lead to some form of death as in not police brutality but close enough as in police get involved to finding out what could have happened after say a young child not want that and say a parent who is molesting them, abusing them, yank them up and then beat them upside the head or something to knock the lights out where they can no longer breathe. And then that sort of thing will have to be covered up when you shouldn't have done it in the first place, right? Accidents who ha accidents do in fact happen. But there has to be some guilt or something there with the family for even Asia to want to walk out her house. That don't that's not that's off. That's more likely to say intrusion was there. Intrusion, intrusion was there in a form of fashion. I don't mean a locksmith coming in. No, I don't mean that. But I'm going to make a video just about that to put the possibility out there. As in because somebody had made a key pertaining to that. Yes. Because somebody had made a key off of Asia's key and came, up, came into the house later on that night when everybody was asleep and yet maybe she wasn't i'm just gonna make a video about that as in the possibilities to keep people from getting too mad at me about what i say because they want to hear every other possibility outside of family familiar matter right see i have such a deep mind i'm able to even scope further that say if young asia was a little bit older and say she left by herself as in was kidnapped or something crazy. I have a mind that looks so far ahead as that as an advance advancement to say if Asia was if young Asia was a little bit older, I would be able to say possibly pregnancy could have stood there. Yes, possibly pregnancy, which is why you will want to get rid of your own child because see that in itself would in fact place shame on the family as well. It said it came out not at nine years old, but said she was like 12 or 13 and she ran away or whatever, or was killed or something and not abducted. That sort of thing you would want to hide too because see to be too deeply religious is to not practice the shun and shame in the room of molestation as in a father getting his own child pregnant. You would in fact want to get rid of the seed as in the as in the get rid of the seed as well as the bad deed which has been planted. So people wouldn't religious people wouldn't want that, but see she's too young to even go there. There are children that in fact get pregnant at like 10 years old and stuff like that. But her womb more than likely wouldn't be completely developed to do that sort of thing. Say get pregnant by somebody in the house at nine years old that sort of thing that's just too much there's there's no way no there's no way no kid at that age is going to leave their house at no 4 a.m and just put themselves outside of the front door period if something is not going on as in wrong in the house so something was there as in it stood there all alone right but remember to be a, a outsider too far out as in not living in somebody's houses to be able to see from afar once something hit mass media you're able to like you the first question it was will be man 
who was being abused and who was the abuser. Because to walk away from something is to know that it could be bad, as in really bad. Right? Con in connection to what you're walking away from. That's why you leave in the first place. Children just don't leave just to leave a good household. Because, see, any Christian family could really cover their mess and how they're doing stuff. I myself have alcoholic, yes, people in family, right? In the immediate family that are like alcoholic and wish to struggle with, they struggle with that sort of thing. And that's not to put them on blast, but they're, I carry and share somewhat of the same blood with them, right? They're not parents, but they're immediate family. And so that sort of thing, when they go to church, beer and alcohol is not there. As in, they don't take it with them. They don't carry it with them. And not only that, they don't carry it outside of their home. And so the public wouldn't even know that it, that is, in fact, one of their issues in which they struggle with, right? That's given the example of even my own family. So how could somebody say that Asia's parents were some of the most best parents and yet they never met them? As in, they never knew what could have went on in that household because... It's been known that sometimes parents get mad at their own kids, slap them in the face, and yet they're deeply religious people, and yet threaten them with whatever while they're standing there. You better keep your mouth shut, right? But not telling them not to tell people when they're slapping them. They're not telling them, don't say nothing about I slap you, but just slapping them. I'm sure they're not going to get up, up in front of the church at the podium and stay say to the congregation, I slapped such and such last night for talking back. It's common sense. What you don't know that goes on between people's four walls of their house, you can never say. But you can question. But you can't say, see, I don't like stuff like that. I don't like for anybody to say go missing and then people want to get mad and say, well, <laughs> her family was deeply religious. Knowing that I myself came from a deeply religious background, and not only that, you got gays in the family. I got gays in the family who was full-blown involved in church. Yes, males as well as females, right? Sorry for the outing, but to be specific is it just paying that even itself. As in people didn't even know that, and yet I did, about what they were, right? Outside of myself. And not only that, growing up, growing up with other deeply religious people, some of the stuff that you see, you will be in shock yourself. Some of the stuff you see when you stand in some of these people's houses that are deeply religious and some of the stuff that even they practice in their own house, as in how they talk and treat and mistreat their own children. And yet people on, on the outside of the house wouldn't even know because they weren't there just enough to see. As in the room and all that. Some of us done grew up around deeply religious people enough to say have friends of the family close by and you go make a visitation over their house and you see all type of stuff behind the four walls of the house. There be drug addicts, there be crackheads, there be people owing people drug money where a ransom should in fact be planted and placed, right? There be molestation going down, there be rapers all that and some of these people in fact be ministers on top of that so never say just because somebody is in church that that sort of thing can't happen because you yourself would in fact be naive if it came as in the conclusion came to say her family or somebody kill her in her house that would be devastation and heartbreaking in itself right but not only that that would in fact open your own awareness to the possibilities what could have in fact been done as it went down if I ain't in somebody's house and yet I've had connections to religious people and knowing knowing that my uncle owned the church, my grandmother's brother owned the church, I know how they operate. They Some of them can be the most mean and devious people. And they're able to cover because, remember, they practice religious ways. They, pre they practice and carry the Bible, which is a cover in itself. They're, see, religious people, oftentimes, a lot of them are, are in fact trying to escape their devious acts. Which is why they go and follow religion in the first place. Because even some of them people can't even live with themselves over some of the past deeds of which they've done in the past, right? 
some of them have a hard time putting it behind them so what they do is go become baptized fully baptized as well as drenched in religion itself because that in fact religion is in fact a covering for your past sins which is why many religion people are there in the first place you got to understand the detail I'm almost 40 years old and ain't even there yet almost I got a little bit of ways to go I don't like to tell my age on video because I don't know who's watching <laughs> stalkers and all that but religious people that's why many religious people are in fact disliked I love the religious people matter of fact there's a few individuals I still today have crushes on and yet I know their sexuality and yet other outsiders don't yes yes right and so and me saying that they in fact use the religion as a covering to cover themselves because sometimes they have too much of a bad messy past is to in fact run away from that itself which is why you will want to go practice religion because if you can't deal with yourself even dealing with your past you're going to yes run away from that and cloak yourself in something to make you feel that you're much more better than other individuals which stand around you in which many religious people in fact do the judgment aspect if I say to somebody religious you know what I'm bisexual but I don't party I don't club I don't stay out late at night I don't have a bed but I choose to you know cover up the foot of my bed with maybe a blanket or even my socks let me think what else do I do and don't do I choose to put my fruit in a blender upside down right I mean you can mention anything to religious people and they would in fact drag it down as in crush it down in judgment over even that in the realm of how it needs to be done based upon Jesus standards and based upon the biblical standards right many of us can't live up to that standard as in the center in which I stand today I can't live up to all those standards of the Bible and biblical texts but to be stand judged by those who practice that sort of faith is to know more likely they don't want you around because many of them are so sort of vain in their own eyes by biblical law and standard they drive you away as has been said such and such was driven out of Egypt I don't know all about that right but they in fact drive you away so if they do all that what makes you think if a murder was done say in a household of anybody's not just Asia what makes you think they're not going to in fact overlay that as an overglaze that with the covering and, and set religion right on top of it people do that sort of thing that's why we have so much naive people in the world but many people as I stated before in my last video many people in fact fear religious people because they know even sex cults are sometimes involved in that yes it is because see to worship something so much said such as Jesus in the Bible is to know you put nothing before that right you just put that there right and as you're doing it sometimes sex cults are in, in fact involved in even that sometimes even suicides are involved in that as in everybody drinking and eating something and all going laying somewhere together and dying all on that same day right sex cults and dying cults and heaven's gate and all that type of stuff like I don't think heaven's gate was Christian I can't remember but that's why people fear that sort of thing like religion because they don't know if they get involved with those type of people how they're going to try to get them into the cult as well as try to make them form their ways and habits in the realm of the fashion of the cult itself by doing all type of things so people a lot of times when they see religious people they often run a run the other way despite how religious people present themselves that's not to mock them and not to tear them down no it's just speaking a fact it's just to speak a fact more likely some religious people gonna like they're not gonna like this video as they see it at after I done called out full blown my own sexuality but if God know what he created me as or she created me as then even God can take it 
as in what I am standing here today as. Feel what I'm saying? I just, I don't, I don't really like religion like that because, see, I stated before when I put that video, sexuality, religion, and the one photo pertaining to Asia, because, see, if a child goes missing, right, even that young child, many of them, not just to Asia, let me use all missing children, for example. Some of them in that, the mess of the missing aspect, some of them young children... <laughs> Sometimes that go missing, some of them could in fact be not gay fully, but on the way to being gay. And yet sometimes their parents know about that sort of thing, which is why they would want to push them out the house, run them out the house. You see all type of gay kids becoming homeless because how their parents treat them, as in running them down the block because they're gay, right? Holding and raising the Bible saying you're going to hell because God don't believe in that, right? And me saying that... It just, for me, I just feel like I don't like religion pertaining to that. Because I think that you being a parent, you should allow God to handle that if your child is gay. And not you take it in your own hands or you're pushing your child out the front door because they're like that. First of all, that's God's matter and not your own. As even despite you being a parent, that's God matter for you. To say if a child is gay and they're living under your household or something like that. Or even in your family, extended family, immediate family, whatever. You should in fact leave it up to God to judge that child despite you giving birth to them. Because God created them, right? It was purpose for them to be there, right? So God had to in fact implant something just to give you the thought or possibly not the thought to even get pregnant in the first place. Somewhere in that God had to play a part as in role in that in the creation. Because after a child is born comes purpose. As in the child living that sort of thing out. So that is in fact God's situation. So I just, I don't be in a, agreeing with certain things. Hold on, let me pause. I'm trying to see where the thing is at. Let me pause right quick. Because it's going to go off again. So, if say, when I mentioned, when I said, well, maybe Asia herself could have had crushes. I had to really look at the photo, even though her being in her uniform, although that's not going to really put a whole piece together. And yet it's still good to question because to be in a deeply religious house is to know even one of the children could have possibly had somewhat of a gay tendency they could be completely they could have been all the way straight but who knows more and more children are coming out along the way as gay but a child like that in a religious household wouldn't have questioned that thing say if they would if the young asia or anybody i'm just using her for example if they have a crush on a teammate right i'm a tomboy i should know i am what i am so i should know right so i'm saying even if the, the child say had it in a a crush on a teammate and say mom or dad scoped that out as in a parent scoping that out and they're deeply religious they wouldn't want that in their house they wouldn't even they possibly wouldn't even want her in their house that could lead to abuse too that's why i asked about the photo as in that photo being found with asia's belongings like why was it there like why was that there a murderer could plant that yes but that could be more with that because say you, if you say if a parent see that you're on your way to having crushes on say the same sex, even that will give enough for a parent to say kill you or something, put you to death, and then plant a photo over the simple fact they felt that you was the devil or something for the simple fact that you're on your way to being gay or something. You got to understand the mindset of religious people, which is why I can understand why so many people fear them. Because if a religious person, say, fear somebody that's gay, even their own children, and say many of them kill them because they think the child has a crush on somebody, not saying that that sort of thing I don't think happened, but I'm just giving the example. If that was to happen, you know, then, then in a sense, a parent will be like, well, you know, I kind of think such and such might be that way. 
that way as in the gay desire as in having a young child having a crush on somebody else teammate or something i don't want that stuff around me and i want it in my house and more than likely they will check the child before they kill her or something like that that sort of thing has went on in the past and possibly even today in the right now and possibly in the future because people get killed for all type of things and the best way to cover it is to just throw something else in the mix to make it look like it didn't do it but people do in fact get killed for over some of the most craziest things transsexuals are being killed today just because they're dressing as something in which people feel that they're not but who's to say what they're not let i'm thinking to myself let them people be themselves i'm talking about men that dressed as women and they're grown men on top of that allow them to be themselves because if god created them by religious standard then he will he will resolve whatever needs to be resolved if it's meant for it to be resolved but if they feel like and are comfortable in just that allow them to be because see everybody is sinning on this world in the first place everybody is sinning taking advantage of everybody else even sometimes at the church you meet a collection plate a word sometimes some of these ministers and pastors are asking for too much just to buy a private jet that in itself could be considered sin in itself yes it can because you're using and taking advantage of other people right so if a pastor can sit and walk around telling his congregation i know that your lights you can't afford the light bill or some of the stuff that I heard in some of these churches growing up, I could give you some stories and some great examples. Yes, I can. Some of these ministers, pastors literally walk around in the church full, fully robed. And many of these members have young children and yet they can barely afford their bills. The parents of the young children. And yet the minister says, just trust on God and give your last and trust and believe God will provide for you. So in a sense, what he's saying, he's going to leave them in the dark themselves, not by light bill, but just by that could lead to eviction if you don't pay your rent so that you can get to the minister so he can buy himself a private jet to fly everywhere, right? And yet you ain't going with him. That leaves people in poverty, which is why the black community is the way that it is. To stand above and be a rise above, even on the pastor level, is even to see him and tell him about himself for what he is. The, the ministers, if you're going to tell somebody that got kids that they don't need to pay their rent because you want their last nickel, dime, and quarter just so you can buy a private jet is to say something could possibly be wrong with you, the minister pastor. Because who does that? Because even people that live in poverty still got to feed their children. They're not going to take the mouth, the food out of the children's mouth just so you can go fly across the world in a private jet. What type of sense does that make? That's wrong. That's wrong ideology, which is why I can't be found and scoped out in no realm of connection to that ideology or ideology. Tongue twister again, my my words got twisted. I can't be around that sort of thing is what I'm trying to say. Because for ministers and pastors to be taking food out of children's mouths so that the mother and father possibly or more so possibly single mother or even family anyway extended family them all going to church sitting listening to this minister telling you and bragging to you about what he got because some of these pastors even do that brag about the detail where they've been and where they going and how they wife and they husband going off on some cruise and all this other stuff right and then they want you to sit and listen to and know you're deep in poverty and they making false promises to you of how god is going to bless you for giving your last to them even that needs to be examinated it don't add up as in the retail as well as the bell it's completely out of line and the way that some of these pastors do things like that you know you know these people got babies sitting in church and they got to feed them as well as pamper them as in diaper them down that sort of thing has to be paid for because even diapers ain't cheap and yet many pastors don't care they still want their private chain private jet they still want money out of the hands of the poor for a private jet I'm not with that sort of thing, depending on who the pastor is. Now, if the pastor, if the pastor is giving money to schools and stuff like that and helping to build stuff like that, then I can get with it. But if not, 
You ain't got to worry about seeing me there. I'm on the other side as on the outside looking in as the a sinner. Yes, a sinner. That's a new word I just created looking in at you. These pastors. I'm not hawk spitting on their game. No, I'm not. I let uh, a lot of them to do what they do. And I've been cool with some pastors in the past. But many of the ones that I have, they in fact built schools. One of my pastors was one of them, in which I used to go to church back then when I was going, but I no longer go, as I stated. But this individual took a time to, in fact, build schools. That's what you do. To take from the poor is to give back, is all I'm, I'm saying. I'm thinking that's all to be said about that. Don't take my character as in slandering church folks' character. I'm just saying, use common sense as well as logic and being wise and knowing when you're being it taken advantage of by a minister you got to understand that because that's not cool for a minister to have a big old mega televised church want people to poor people to sow into that and not think they're going to get anything back that is off the hook that is completely off the hook that's murder in itself almost because to lay there in bed and possibly starve off yourself as a minister is going on his private jet with your money is to say man there there's in fact a celebrity involved with that the minister and he knows that's crooked that's off the hook but yeah so i think that's all to be said i'm gonna end this video i hope you enjoyed it like subscribe i was gonna say invent but what's to invent? Like, subscribe, share, and I'm done. Enjoy the rest of the day. I know I will. I got to put some Vaseline on my lip. That's what that is. To be a faulty individual is to have faulty eyes in the realm and matter of how you scope stuff all out. As in where I'm saying how I'm perceiving things, I might be right and I might be wrong. And I say that. I said before, innocent till proven guilty. I didn't say they were guilty, but I did say what I stated. So, that's it.